Welcome guys, uh, excited to be here. I'm Greg Stevens. I'm the founder of Vara, and I'm here today with Mike Saunders, our CEO. Uh, this is a, a great topic today. We're gonna be talking around the Decentral Autonomous Organization and tokenomics. So I'm gonna get straight into it. Firstly, Mike, this is directed at you. <laughs> Why have we created this system, this decentral autonomous organization? Why have we morphed from a centralized business into this decentralized ecosystem? Thanks, Greg. I'd like to just start off by saying thank you very much for having me. Great, Great to, to be here. Great to have you here, Mike. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think the realization that this ecosystem is significantly bigger than the sum of its parts, um, and it's the opportunity for this to evolve way beyond the confines of what one singular centralized entity can actually manage um, is really at the core of why we're wanting to make this move towards a DAO. Um, we are already seeing um, the opportunity for multiple different types of contributors and consumers in this ecosystem. Different content partners, Absolutely. different publishers. Across the board. When yeah. you look at you know, user-generated content um, from individuals, you've got a variety of types game of consumers. Developers. Game developers, gamers, play-to-earn gamers. You've got brands that are coming on board. We've got our network affiliates. There's, there's a variety of, of, of user types here. And we really need to um, move towards a more democratic approach to how we're going to control um, this, the trajectory of this ecosystem. And, and, and any kind of sort of background in terms of what a DAO structure is? I, I know we were talking about it earlier today. Maybe just for the audience, you can uh, just give us some insights there. Absolutely. You know, DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization, um, it's, it's all in a name, really. Um, the, the term has been bandied around since probably the early 90s. Um, many would argue, though, that the first real application of a DAO is actually Bitcoin itself. Yes. Um, as being a, a truly global decentralized protocol. Um, even in the way that the, um, the validators actually work in um, the Bitcoin ecosystem, needing in excess of 90% consensus for any actual updates to take place. A lot of contributors can throw ideas into the pot, um, but there's no sort of set time and when someone you know, holds an AGM like you would with a, tr a traditional shareholding structure and go, you know, we're voting yay or nay. Yeah. It's all sort of based on the, on the computational layer on chain. Okay. Now, Bitcoin itself has a protocol behind what the ledger itself is doing. Um, what the Dark Fusion protocol is bringing to the table is actually bringing computation and um, Turing complete logic to the chain itself which means we can now introduce smart contracts onto Bitcoin that can act and provide this DAO governance structure on, on BTC. So it's really, it's that kind of that aspect of um, autonomy uh, where we can introduce stakeholders, contributors into a system where they essentially have a vote. Absolutely. Um, and we can even go so far as to also manage and control weighted tiering in terms of those voting rights. Uh, and another interesting point is is around why the dark fusion technology uh, was so crucial uh, to us setting up this, this structure and more importantly on Bitcoin. Why, why didn't we set up a DAO previously? Well, Greg, it actually comes down to the constraints of the programming language of Bitcoin itself. Yeah. Um, what the team at Dark Fusion have been able to do is bring a layer of computation to Bitcoin's mainnet, which previously has only really existed in the EVM paradigm or Ethereum. And one would also argue that, you know, we, we're not interested in setting up DAOs on EVM-based no. uh, solutions. And that all goes down to the trust of Bitcoin, the adoption of Bitcoin, uh, and the sort of the, the value that can be unlocked within that uh, network. Absolutely. And I think in its simplest form is if you were building a DAO on top of a centralized organization at its fundamentals, it's not a DAO. Yeah. So any perceived DAO sitting on Ethereum is not actually decentralized. Exactly. It's true and I think that that's really what Dark Fusion brings to the table through smart contract tooling, uh, allowing us to put the necessary controls um, to facilitate the rollout of a decentral autonomous organization. And now we can do that. So making true on the promise of our solution on Bitcoin um, and now to build out the world's first network powered decentral gaming system on Bitcoin uh, brought to you by BRX. So it's very exciting. Now I want to go into 
the structured tiers um, of this organization and how our network and our ambassadors benefit off this new construct in setting up this DAO. So we come from the affiliate network, which has been the main distribution um, point for us and how we build out our properties. But now how are we rewarding those participants in this new construct and where does the value lie? So I think if we kind of just cover the base of, of how um, the validation and voting structure would actually work, um, in, in this in this type of model, um, holders of the VRX token are essentially the um, holders of the, the computation in this ecosystem. Um, they're typically known as validators, um, and they would then stake up their tokens in order to be able to facilitate any transactions or decisions made within the ecosystem. Um, we are able to bring a tier over and above just generic holding of tokens and staking in the form of, as you mentioned, founders, founder status badges, and we've also got a current um, promotion running for our pro elite um, status members. Um, this really, at the end of the day, is rewarding um, early adopters and big ticket investments into this um, into this DAO, actually, um, and you know, really, really like rewarding people that have aligned to our long-term vision. Okay, and we're going to talk more about that now in in the tokenomics. Absolutely. Um, now, I wanted to just kind of hit home around the actual tiering um, of how the, um, the founder status and um, the pro elite status actually work within this governance structure um, and that the limited supply of those statuses and then being closed promotions um, mean that these, the access to these status tiers and governance will never be minted again in the future. So now let's look at the, the, the governance controls. So this is going to be a, you know, we're looking at a strategy whereby you know it's it's always you know in nature in in kind of reality it's it's a lot trickier than one would expect in how to evolve this but obviously we now have the solution within the smart contracting technology to facilitate the rollout so we will be doing it in a phased approach um, so currently we are a, a centrally run operation um, which is leading up now to a centralized listing um, and as soon as we get, from a public perspective, more participants in the system, uh, we start phasing this into a partially decentralized system. And then ultimately, you know, the goal is to be fully decentral, all on Bitcoin, our own marketplace, our own system, wallet, live, functional, where everything is, you know, essentially running on the, the Bitcoin network. Yeah. So yes, it is a multi-phase approach. It's not something we can flick a switch and just transition overnight. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, we're probably looking at a couple of years to really get this absolutely nailed. Um, but it doesn't mean that the first action to, towards this decentralized play doesn't start immediately. Yes. Um, and, and that is from the perspective of um, looking at our, actually our token um, vesting and emissions um, would be our founders initially, pro elite, and our public seed round. Um, and we're actually introducing a um, booster mechanism where there'll be 120 million of our billion tokens will be allocated. Well, that's really the value that um, these early contributors Absolutely. unlock, um, you know, over the, the next two to five years. I exactly. And now the sort of the airdropping of those additional tokens just further enhances our commitment to rewarding these early adopters. And it really like cements home um, the, the voting rights that these, these two top tier um, governance holders will actually have in, in, in the long term in the DAO. Now we're going to talk around tokenomics. We've been working on this plan for some time now. This business has evolved uh, we've been through a number of different cycles, all central to our core vision, which was to create this truly decentralized Bitcoin vision. And going from a massively multiplayer online metaverse game, uh, building out this robust affiliate network, uh, bringing in the ultra fair component with the iGaming future, um, and so much more planned on the roadmap. We had to build a tokenomic plan which was robust and essentially accounted for all this growth by rewarding early contributors 
and making sure that we have the sustainability, the longevity uh, that one would expect in building out a healthy token economy. Absolutely, Greg. Um, it's been a fairly exhaustive exercise, um, and I think we've covered all, across all of our T's, dotted our I's. Yeah. Um, I, the, I think at the core of it is the idea that the tokenomic model has followed the evolution of the business and broken out of the constraints yeah. of a particular game or game ecosystem in terms of the MMO. It's now a lot bigger than this. Um, it encompasses the entire marketplace, the ecosystem, multi-participants, um, and to your point, also aligns to the future vision of various other types of game, game content, iGaming, um, that will actually come into this ecosystem. Um, we've modeled this in such a way um, that it's showing our intention um, behind stability and longevity of this project. Um, you know, there's, there's vesting that exceeds six years um, in certain allocations. Um, and you know, we've we focused a lot of the, the tokenomic um, allocation of early vesting to your point to, to reward our early adopters. Um, we mentioned earlier this booster mechanism um, post our founder, Pro Elite, um, and IEO with our um, partner CoinStore. We'll be doing airdrops um, to, to the, the participants um, who pick up tokens in, 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 that, in that series. Um, and then sort of starts moving towards um, aspects of um, our various other buckets. Our community and project grants, um, we've got quite a strong allocation on that front. Our platform development and a large portion, um, almost 20% focusing on marketing over the next six years to help proliferate this, this ecosystem. And uh, within these tokenomics, uh, what was the, the, the kind of the, the, the core design um, ethos? Certainly, um, looking over the near term, um, yeah. it's about making sure we can gain traction. Okay. Um, and a big part of that is coming back to this rewarding early adopters. And something we haven't really touched on is actually um, the idea of how we're giving out rewards. Um, we can have a right to mint with all of our 1 billion tokens pre-allocated and actually reward um, validators with things other than VRX tokens. Um, using the Dark Fusion protocol, for example, Bitcoin. Um, that is going to be the primary reward incentive uh, for, for validators and participants um, in our token ecosystem. We can then also introduce various other as SEL assets, for example, rocket fuel in-game. Um, you know, so it, it, it's kind of limitless in terms of what we're able to do on that front. Um, we've got quite a low um, emissions um, curve initially. Um, and looking at sort of in the next 12 months um, when our first unlocks start taking, our first major unlocks start taking place, we know that we've got increased capital velocity, taking for example the game which will be launching in six weeks time, um, you know, a lot more activity in the ecosystem. So let's break down the tokenomics uh, high level. So if we look at our total allocation, uh, if you could run us through some of the numbers. Total allocation, one billion, um, minted, um, on SEL um, will be our final play um, where our tokens will live, be traded, um, and the ecosystem where, where the VRX token, token will live. Um, How is that spread in terms of allocations? Because So we're going to go on to the value to early contributors, but how is that spread across the board? You've talked around how we're promoting longevity growth, yep. uh, but in terms of initial allocations versus you know post-listing allocations and how we make sure that we keep the system healthy and sustainable over time. So just going to refer to my notes quickly, just to confirm. Um, but we've got a spread of 20%, 200 million tokens across community. That would be foundations, grants, and the like. 28% across rewards. That includes founders, pro elite, seed, and boosters. Um, we've allocated 19% to um, company operations and platform development. 14% um, of that going to, uh, an additional 14% going to core team and advisors, and a big allocation of 190 million tokens, 90% on marketing for content contributors, influencers, brand partners, and the likes. Okay, so that, that, that explains how the spread works across the ecosystem. And as you, as you alluded to, uh, in how we release those tokens, it's done in a very kind of constructive, conservative manner. The, the sort of the, where we've been able to throttle the emissions um, is on the sort of more evergreen aspects of, of, the, of the ecosystem. 
Um, what I mean by that, it's, it's the foundation aspects. It's the platform development. We've drawn out marketing over a long period, as I mentioned earlier, um, minimum six years. Um, community um, project grants. Um, we, we're going to be liquidating um, VRX tokens over a series of, of, of probably up to four years um, to make sure that we're constantly bringing new fresh content, um, acquisition of other game titles, um, a variety of different contributors, um, and rewards. Um, they will take place over around about two years. So let's talk around the early contributors in the project um, and their value uh, in the short, medium to long term, um, the benefits, the bonuses, um, specifically for our founder members going on to Pro Elite, then going on to public. So there are three key tiers. Yep. You've got founders, early contributors in the project. You've got the Pro Elite status, and then we now have the public sale allocation, um, which will all be facilitated and run through our network mark, our network arm. Yes. Uh, what is the main benefit? Okay, so we've talked. You talked around the privileges within the DAO. Mm -hmm. So there will be voting privileges based on your tier um, and contribution to the network, um, given the exclusive uh, NFT um, status badge um, and what that entails uh, in, in the construct of the DAO. So based on your rank, based on your tier, you, you get specific rights. Yes. Uh, but then the real value um, away from the unlocks, which we're going to talk around now, is this uh, booster allocation. So being uh, a part of this three-tier bucket unlocks the booster allocation, which is, um, which is enormous yep. in terms of value. Can you just want to run us through that? So there's actually quite a lot that you've that, that you've mentioned there, Greg. Um, and I think it's, it all encompasses revenue reward benefits. Okay. Um, I think is, is the 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 aspect to really hit home. So um, we've, uh, we've got access keys, um, which we know are a multiplier of, of revenue rewards. Um, there's an allocation of um, revenue dedicated towards these um, early adopter uh, statuses across your founder uh, tier and pro elite. Um, and any NFT that is staked that is acts as a revenue reward multiplier um, benefits off additional tokens staked. Um, so, as a validator holding a founder status badge with an access key, I then get not only the, the governance um, DAO voting rights, but I also get um, a right to um, an increased weighting in the revenue of the ecosystem. Um, then through the, the, the booster allocation that we've mentioned, after we've gone through the, the founder, pro elite, and our um, seed phase through the network, uh, we'll be airdropping this 120 million tokens to those early participants, which then adds a, it's a, it's a huge multiplier. So to give you an example, um, we... There will be specific um, actions. Absolutely. One would have to take within this to firstly keep people engaged in our system, which unlocks these rewards over time. Certainly. So because it's all still running through the network, there'll be certain uh, mechanisms that are... Um, triggered within the ambassador portal and functions and actions that would need to take place um, in terms of velocity and activity, in terms of sales, um, the, um, the minimum staking requirements as well will come into play um, to unlock certain tiers and rewards. And to your point as well, um, the rank leaderboard will actually hold a lot of gravitas in terms of um, how individuals get to participate within, within the governance structure in the early phases. So that, that's really where the, this, the value lies now for being a part of these three tiers um, in terms of the tokenomic plan and the reward that we're giving back to our early contributors, which uh, now makes up up to 12% of the entire network. Yeah, the boosters um, in itself in this early phase um, equates to <laughs> yeah, a massive 12%. So really that's important to understand, Mike, is uh, the value behind these three tier buckets is not only do I have the incentive pools, uh, the, the, everything, all the utility that that token unlocks uh, within this network structure, but we have access to this booster allocation, which accounts for 12% of the network over time that will be rewarded to tier one, tier two, and tier three participants, which is incredible. Yeah, Greg, it's, it's a massive allocation and it's really, it's a, it's, it's a vote of thanks to our, our, our early adopters. 
So now we, I want to talk around uh, the Yield Pro mm. um, and how that translates into value in terms of VRX and staking. Yeah. I think it's a very important thing to cover um, because Yield Pro is right with us in the here and now. Um, the, you know, we've spoken about uh, rewards emissions in the form of Bitcoin, um, yet individuals with tokens staked up in Yield Pro will see that they are accruing um, rewards in the form of additional tokens. Yes. Um, that is something that is essentially a, a near-term um, or medium-term approach in order to make sure that there is utility and rewards going out to the network right now. Um, and as we'll transition away within the next sort of six to 12 months um, after, well, actually it wouldn't be, it's in 11 months when our, um, the, um, the lockup ends, um, before that time, we'll crack open the Yield Pro contract and we will then transition from a rewards emission cycle in terms of um, rewarding individuals with these VRX tokens and start transitioning into our um, uh, future goal of, of BTC rewards. So part of our allocation from the marketing um, allocation of VRX at the moment is what is going into the, um, the Yield Pro rewards at the moment. So just to summarize our discussion, uh, we will be releasing the tokenomics, uh, but let's just, just cover the basis. So we're a billion tokens on issue. Uh, the system has been designed around longevity and sustainability over time, um, and that's clear in our schedule uh, in terms of our vestings, our unlocks, rewarding early participants in the system, uh, and really, you know, accounting for all the additional value that we're going to bring into the system over time, you know, with the marketing allocation, the operations allocation, having this project grants, our foundation allocation, everything has been designed uh, in these tokenomics uh, to, you know, promote and grow the value within our system over time. Absolutely. And, you know, to add to that, I think it's, it's really the, the way we've looked at the variety of contributors now and what this potentially can be in the future is, is front and center to those individuals yeah. that are going to be supporting this ecosystem um, and how we can make sure that you know, their, their inclusion years down the line, that there's still benefit to them as well. Uh, another point I'd like to discuss is there's two aspects to this tokenomics. And this is the, kind of the, the beauty of this model is that you have utility already behind this token within our affiliate network, which is the key driver of helping us distribute and propagate this ecosystem uh, in unlocking these incentive pools. So more tokens and access keys I have at stake, the more incentive rewards through the ambassador program I can unlock. Then you have the utility, utility of our token being a listed token where you have that appreciation in value. Um, so there's really value you know, on all fronts here uh, in terms of you know having this 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 token that's already in market, having a, cent a centrally run business which you know has been uh, profitable over the last year, so proven cash flows that we have you know built out, and now we're going to be bringing into this decentral economy, which is ultimately going to prop up the token. A lot of GameFi, where you know three projects that are in market, you know, are highly speculative you know, don't have supported uh, business models with proven out cash flows that, you know, they can now bring into something that's going to list in terms of the value. Um, and I think that that's what's very unique about what we're doing here. So we've set the foundation. We're listing a token. We've, you know, got these uh, proven business fundamentals that we're bringing into market. Now, when we look at outside public participants, you know, outside the network, that are looking to get involved in this business, that are looking to contribute, you know, we've done a lot of the groundwork, you know, to get to this point, you know, where a lot of these types of business models, they'll go list a token, you know, they'll rely on that kind of speculative outlook and demand on raising capital and getting the stock moving before they've even proven out the fundamentals. Absolutely. I think it's, um, we certainly haven't put all our eggs in one basket, so to speak. Um, and if we quickly just rattle off a few sort of examples of utility of the token. You might have a long-term investor mindset, um, founders that are staking up massive amount of tokens, drawing off yield over a long period of time. 
Um, we will have obviously have our centralized listing, which brings an exciting paradigm to, to the VRX token value. And it does, you know, we, we, we do want guys trading. We want velocity of the token as well. Um, you're going to have play to earn gamers that are utilizing the VRX token as a transactional token um, that are able to. But then there's a difference between hype trading and trading on business with fundamentals. Ab absolutely. And, and I, th I think it's, you know, it's really just highlighting the, the multifaceted use of something that means that, um, you know, the, the balance and the sustainability of the token means that we're not reliant on one area, one aspect, or one type of particular actor in the ecosystem for the long term benefit of everybody else. And, and that's why I think this network arm is, is so powerful because you have a network that can help distribute, can help propagate. There's a compensation plan which incentivizes the network. But now, you know, on building out this business, you know, with proven cash flows, we're now reinvesting into this economy. Can you imagine what that does for the token price? Because now there's, it's, it's a kind of a win-win scenario. You, you've got this compensation plan, which incentivizes the people to grow because, you know, there's livelihood, there's an income. But in turn, they're actually driving the price of their token up because they're building out this business, which is incredible when you think about it. So it's kind of participants, contributors, you know, ultimately deciding their own fate. Absolutely. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I think it's it's all aligned to the buy-in and the... Um, the vision, alignment to the vision of what of what we're building out here. Um, and this transition with the DAO moving towards 100% of network profit going into this the, the token value, which supports the ecosystem across every facet of every platform that we're building, really kind of hits home at like how important the network function is. And I think that that's the key message we want to get across here today, is we're building out a global network focused on gaming, iGaming, and all it has to offer on Bitcoin, first in the world. Imagine us growing this network, but 100% of the profit that's generated goes into building out this token economy while incentivizing the contributors who are powering this network arm. That's a business that will scale. That's a phenomenal story. That really, truly is. I think there's, there's yeah, untold potential um, and there's definitely a lot of reason for a lot of different people to look at this favorably and want to jump on board. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so just to summarize, we've really built these tokenomics around sustainability, uh, longevity, protection for our early contributors and investors in the project, but something that's going to scale, having the right mechanisms in place in order for this. Uh, to be something that lasts. And I think that that's the important part of this, something that can grow. Anyone coming into it, you know, feels rewarded uh, for the value that they're contributing. So I think we've covered, you know, from a risk mitigation perspective, we've covered all our bases with designing this tokenomic plan. But now the key point that I wanted to mention, um, which maybe isn't landing, is that this has not been possible to create a decentralized autonomous organization on Bitcoin up until now. That's done through smart contract tooling. To facilitate this construct has not been possible. And why I believe it's truly decentral, because it's on Bitcoin, and because it's not on any other blockchain where there are, you know, obvious problems and holes and you know, central control. And this is why Bitcoin is so attractive when setting up a construct like this, because it's trusted. It's impossible to hack. You know, there are no vulnerabilities on the Bitcoin network, you know, in order to reverse transactions. Um, and now having this smart contract tooling protocol allows us to set this up. And that's really where the key is. And being able to unlock the utility and the value of Bitcoin, $800 billion plus. Now you've got a gaming DAO, you've got an ecosystem with its own marketplace, with its own wallet technology, exclusive for the gaming market, being able to trade assets um, in BTC, bid, list, buy, true ownership, sovereignty of wealth, 
uh, unlocking the value in Bitcoin, that's where the key lies to this. That's where I'm over the moon when I think about the possibilities of what we can do with this system. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it truly is an astonishing breakthrough. Um, and yeah, I think pieces are all slotting into place now. Um, and we are so bullish about, you know, getting to markets and, and really building out the future of VRX. Thanks guys for joining. I hope this gave you a good overview of our tokenomic plan, which we will be releasing shortly in this exciting roadmap and partnership with CoinStore. Uh, I'll see you guys soon. Cheers.